In this video, we are going to look at building an Estes rocket powered sled. There was a snowstorm the other day and there's plenty of snow around. So my idea is to take a rocket, just a typical design with an Estes engine in there, and then with the brace to attach it to a makeshift sled here. And that's pretty all straightforward. The only other thing I'm going to try to do is put on some sort of deflector right here. I, I tried things similar to this before and the biggest problem is that if air gets under anything in the front here this just takes off wildly and um, i'm hoping with that deflector to put pressure down uh, by airflow and to keep these skis down on the snow so we'll see we'll see what happens i'm making it up as i go so let's get at it so to start i'm going to make a makeshift rocket here i took these fins off a, another makeshift rocket and glued them on here. These are paper toweling rolls. I'm going to attach some together. So it'll be long, but I think that'll help it keep its uh, place in the air as it's moving. Um, and then, of course, I'll put a nose cone on the top. And I have this piece of aluminum laying around here. I think what I'm going to do is cut it in two and actually put two sleds, one next to another for stability. So the halfway point of this is 17 and a half inches. <laughs> What I plan on doing next is cutting out a rectangular piece off the support right here, which would leave this piece free so that I could bend it up and make a ski front out of this. I'm done cutting out the rectangles on both of them. So I put the front of the skis on like that. I did that simply by taking a can, putting it right here, and then bending it around the can. I'm going to set the skis aside for a minute here and start working on the actual rocket. And I need to attach these paper toweling tubings together they're thin so the support between them needs to be strong I'll be using aluminum tape to do that I finished taping the paper toweling rolls together with the aluminum tape and it is sturdy the skis have been completed here uh, this is a nose cone out of a plastic cup and the top to something else right here I glued together that'll go on the front so I've decided to use a piece of aluminum it's three feet long about an eighth inch thick to make the brace uh, for these skis here and I'm going to cut it in half and I think I'm going to brace this rocket both in the front here and also near the back, uh, which means I need to extend the skis a bit there. So I now have two pieces that are uh, 18 inches long. So I'm going to bend them in half at a 90 degree angle. And then I'll attach one half here, one half here, and then the rocket will be put at the very top. So I'm bending this to 90 degrees. Nothing here is actually attached. It's all just balanced. These are the two 90 degree angle aluminum strips I just bent. I think what I'm going to do is put a PVC uh, piece, probably lighter than this. I have a narrower one underneath here like this. And then that'll give me a way to zip tie this down to the whole contraption. So these will be attached. And then I use paint sticks here to extend the skis. I'll find a way to attach this to that. After some thought, I replaced these smaller paint sticks with these much larger ones, uh, mainly for stability and strength of the structure. In the skis, I've drilled three equal holes there through which I'll be putting screws. I'm just gonna finish up putting these screws in here. All right, done with one completed ski here. So I'm drilling holes in the aluminum support where I need to attach that uh, piece of PVC and that will give me the ability to attach the rocket to the PVC with zip ties. So I finished attaching the uh, aluminum braces to the PVC by drilling a hole on each side and as you saw, and then screwing them right into the PVC. Seems to be strong. I might glue some of these together in addition or epoxy them. And this will fit like this. And um, I just need to attach these arms now to both the paint sticks up here and to the aluminum skis in the front there. So to attach this frame here to the skis, I've come up with um, another method, I guess, than I originally thought. And I'm gonna take a much thinner piece of aluminum here. I'm gonna cut these four pieces here. Uh, it's 
uh, three inches each. And then I have four holes to drill in each one. And then I'll take each individual piece, bend it to the right angle and put two screws here, two screws here, and then another piece will go here, another piece here, and another piece here. I've completed the four small brazes here by cutting and drilling holes in each one of them. I'll need to bend them to the correct angle here and then put screws on the top and bottom. I finished the four braces and uh, bending them, the holes I drilled in them, and I uh, labeled them because each one of these was slightly at a different angle here. I decided to rivet these instead of screw them. Uh, it turned out to be much simpler. I finished the basics of the bottom sled and uh, just simply put the screws in here uh, here and here and on the other side. I need to uh, put a rocket engine in the rocket, attach it to the top here, which will be simple. I just plan on using uh, zip ties there. I'm going to put a deflector shield here to help push the front down when it's moving to keep it on the snow. And then a couple of rudders, one here and one there. I'm putting the skids on my design. I wanted to put this rocket up here and that's all I've been talking about, like so. And then as I'm doing this, and the reason that started before I go any further is because of this thing up here. I've got this big old rocket that's been up here for a couple of years and I thought I should put some sled on that, some skis. And so I started to build this and then I realized, nah, I'm going to shoot this rocket off like a regular rocket separately and I'm just going to build an engine mount for SD's engines on this thing right here. I found these tin tops here and I think what I'm going to do is screw them on there, one on each side to create the rudders that I need. I'm going to start with the C65 SD's rocket engine. Uh, it has a clay cap and the ejection powder on this side, which I'll scrape out once I put it back into the Schedule 40 PVC. And of course, I'll have to tighten that up in there. And then mount it here. It will naturally hit this right here when the engine thrusts forward. And if I zip tie, zip tie it down really well, I think we're going to be just fine. The best way I found to put these engines inside of the PVC is just to take some duct tape and wrap it around until it gets thick enough to fit in there snugly. And then just add some glue. Just scraping out the clay cap here, and uh, eventually you'll hit the powder below it. Just scrape it all out. There you can see some of the powder coming out here. So you can see through here, I scraped out the ejection charge on that C65 at engine and wrapped it up with tape, crammed it in here. It's a nice snug fit. I'll put some glue in here now. Just want to show you the hot glue in there. Pretty basic. So I got this aluminum flashing. I'm going to use this as a downward... Uh, deflector here on the front. I'm going to attach it using this, which is the housing to a glow stick. And um, I saved it. Uh, odds and ends like this some, sometimes come in handy, and this one sure does. It fits in here nicely. I'll glue it in there. So this is the air deflector. Turned out to be a little bit of a project. Took that aluminum and I glued it to a popsicle stick here, put some screws in to make sure it held strong. Um, and then I taped a couple popsicle sticks down here too, just to hold the aluminum stiffer. And one big screw that went into the casing here of the glow stick. And then this is going to go right in here and I'll glue it in there. Lastly, I glued the top of those tin cans on the side here as a guide in the snow. The engine has been uh, zip tied to the top there. And then this front air deflector here is glued on strongly. I think that's going to help. Um, the only other thing I might do here is add a fin at the top because the fins that were on the rocket, I was hoping would help keep it straight in the air, and those are gone, so I just might add a fin or two. So I did add the fins. I cut some aluminum flashing, screwed it on the side here, another identical piece on the other side there, and then put this one on the top here. Uh, we'll see, hopefully that, with these uh, tin can tops acting as guides, will help it go straight. I put a C65 SD's engine in there already with the fuse. Uh, it's ready to go just for a test, and then uh, a blast shield here hopefully to give it some oomph. Okay, we're gonna try our test out here. Okay, not too bad, it went pretty straight. And this was a test is I plan on trying a D or even an E engine. But uh, with the C, it did okay. Went about 20, 25 feet. The smoke you saw coming out of the back, that's the timer that happens before the uh, ejection charger goes off. 
So to take this engine off here that we just shut off, we I just got to cut this and this, these two zip ties. I drew a mark here on this PVC. I'm going to cut it down a little bit here. For this reason, I realized that I can put rocket engines and just zip tie them straight onto that PVC like so. So this is a D-sized engine. It's th thicker than a C65 we just used. So I couldn't find an easy way to do it. And I think this is going to work. Just zip tie this down. But I'm going to cut this off and put a deflector there so that uh, the plastic is protected from the exhaust from the rocket engine. Here's the E. It's quite a bit longer. And that's why I'm cutting it where I am. So I still have enough room to zip tie this onto the PVC. So there's the E. And here is the D. You can see I cut that a little bit off the end there. It's about maybe three quarters of an inch at the most. And I found the nozzle here to an old caulk gun that I filled with glue. And I'm going to insert that in here. And uh, I'll be able to screw something into this glue then here, which will be the deflector shield for the engines. So that'll go in like that. And then I have a piece of aluminum from cutting the other pieces. And I'll put that on like that and bend the back, the bottom back like this. So I did this the same way on the other side, just put a little bit of uh, glue here. Obviously covered the end of the PVC here with aluminum tape to give it extra protection. And I believe with this deflector shield here, the plastic of the PVC should be good no matter what I use. If I zip tie a D engine right here, it's got that front brace there to hit against, and it'll be zip tied down tight to this uh, PVC. The last thing I want to do is record this from the front. So I have this small camera here. I'm going to mount it on the front here, like so. I'm outdoor here at a nearby park. I've got the rocket sled set up. I decided to go with the C11 SDs, although it looks like a D. It's a C11 SDs, uh, just to ramp this up slowly. Uh, everything else is the same except for the camera. I mounted on the front so I'm gonna like this and let's see what happens okay first test with the C11 okay This time we're going to really ramp it up to a D12. That's about four times as strong as what we just did. That, by the way, is just the end of a Q-tip I used to hold these fuses in because the nozzle is too big for the fuse to stay in all by itself. Okay, I'm lighting the D12 SD's engine here. We're going all the way here. That's an E98. This might flip over. I have no idea. can see here from the tracks that at times the skis did bounce and leave the uh, snow here it hit a little bump but for the most part it went extremely straight okay here I am it probably went gosh maybe 100 150 feet it's all the way back there but it's in one piece and it went straight I'm just really surprised how straight it went but that was fun okay it's time to heft it up and put an F engine in there